It's always the Germans being late. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, welcome all. Really good to see you again. Um, because a lot of you guys uh, and women uh, have been here before. So it's great to have Mod Expo again. I'm Gauke Pieter Sietsema. Uh, I'm from the agency Sterk, and I'm also uh, Mod Expo Advisory Board Chairman, which is also something which is in my talk today. Um, I bring you the best wishes from my team back in the Netherlands. We're a group of around 25 people all working on Mod X. Um, so if there's something related to Mod X in the world, we are there. So really good to be here. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about the state of Mod X. So what's currently going on in the Mod X community and what development is currently happening on Mod X. Um, so regarding the community, um, yeah, we, we really have a worldwide community of ModX, and I really want to um, thank you all for being here. It's not just people from Belarus here, it's not just Russian people, there are people from the Netherlands, there are people from the UK, uh, from Germany, there's even an American here, so uh, that, that's really, really cool. So, um, yeah, so we have um, a couple of types of uh, community events in ModX, so, um, and it's not just Mod Expos. So uh, it's, it's meetups, it's hackathons, it's bug hunts, and of course the Mod Expo. So this year there were uh, community events in these uh, regions, these cities, and also there was this place somewhere in the mountains of Switzerland, which I can't really remember what the name was, but that was also a re really cool event. Um, so um, um, I would really like to invite you all uh, to participate in as many ModX events as you can because that's really where you meet new people and you learn a lot of new stuff. Um, meetups are, are the, I guess, the easiest way to interact with other people. Um, and it's a really, I think that's the, one of the core uh, events where you can uh, learn new stuff. Um, but there's also hackathons. Hackathons is something which Started this year, we had two hackathons, one in Malta and one in Surhuislofeen, which is our hometown of Sterk. And um, hackathons are kind of like bug hunts, um, um, but hackathons are more like um, events to improve ModX, to think of something new, for example, think about the UX, uh, the user experience, or uh, think of a new feature. Um, and uh, tomorrow there will be um, a brainstorm session, and it kind of could become a hackathon, if we're up for it, <laughs> but uh, 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 hackathons are really uh, uh, organized to create new stuff. But there's also bug hunts. We had two bug hunts this year, and um, <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, this picture is the bug hunt in uh, Munich, and, uh, and there was also a bug hunt in uh, in, in Sarajevo. And during those bug hunts, we fixed over 500 bugs. So um, and and I mean, fixing bugs isn't really fun. I mean, we prefer to create new features, I guess, and break more stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I think bug hunts are very necessary uh, in, in Mod X, with, because with bug hunts, we just we tear down that, 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 that issue list on GitHub and we can focus on new features again. Um, so the bug hunts were created to, to keep that amount of issues lower, uh, and I really think we should keep holding those bug hunts. Um, so, uh, and now we're at the main event, Mod Expo. So the last Mod Expo was in Munich in 2015. And um, so, and after the Mod Expo in Munich, uh, we were invited here to Minsk and by Ivan. And uh, so we went here for a meetup, which was a really cool event. And I'm really happy that we have the main event in Minsk right now. So thanks for that, Ivan. Um, but all those, all those events, they, they kind of have something, uh, 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 there's something, there's some similarities between all those events. Anybody know what those similarities are? Graham, ModX? Yeah, of course it's about ModX, but, but there's more. Community, yeah. It's, it's not beer, by the way. It really isn't. Nah, nah. Now, honestly, it's not about beer. So, it's about the people. And uh, what Graham said is about the community, because, um, I mean, we have a lot of people in a community, and some people don't even know each other. I know that, uh, in, in, for example, in Minsk in 2015, there were, um, um, there were people who met each other for the first time while they were working from the same country for over, 
five years or something, and that was Vasily. And uh, Vasily met a, a lot of people from the Russian community back then, which was really cool. So, and I think that one started off like, um, yeah, I don't know. It, from, from Minsk 2015, it really started going, uh, and a lot of events happened, and I think really should get, get this going. Uh, there are some people here from the Netherlands, and they uh, came here to the Mod Expo, and uh, they told me that uh, we really, really, really should visit more events like this. And um, that's true, because you won't ever forget stuff like this. This is really amazing. Um, so back to Munich 2015. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Ben, for organizing that. That was really cool. Yeah. So uh, Munich 2015 ended in this bar on the picture. Um, and like most of the events, end in a bar somehow. Um, and that the conversation started over there about we need this central structured uh, board. We didn't call it a board back then. But um, uh, we, we need an organ to, to structure ModX, create a roadmap, and um, yeah, bring ModX uh, further and, and keep it structured. So that ended up being the ModX advisory board. Um, really important question for me to you, who does know that the ModX advisory board exists? That's kind of important to me. So that's not enough hands. It really isn't. So who, so, yeah, so who knows the ModX advisory board? Yeah, yeah, okay. So. There's a big part over there who either hasn't have it translated yet or, uh, <laughs> or doesn't know about it. So I'll get on that. So what does the MAB do? So the MAB is short for Modex Advisory Board. Um, and what the Modex Advisory Board does not do is that it, it, doesn't, it isn't a group of people who program to make Modex better. That's not what they do. Uh, there has been some confusion about that. but. I'm in an MAB, there are some other people here who are in the MAB, and th they are usually developers, but it's not that they are coming together to improve ModX by writing code, it's they're coming together to think about the future of ModX and how we should code. So what features should we, should we work on? Um, and um, so when we started MAB, we, uh, well, it was all new to us. We were never in a board before, and uh, so, the question, what does the MAB do, was kind of important to us as well because we didn't really know what to do. So we had to think of all the structure and all the, uh, the documents and, and, and paperwork we had to do when starting the ModX advisory board. So I think the first couple of months weren't actually about ModX in MAB, but <laughs> about paperwork, about how can we vote, how can we write recommendations and stuff like that. Um, so activity was a bit on the slow side, um, but in the end, we uh, we ended up with some recommendations in the Modex advisory board, and uh, which are these, and you can find these on GitHub. Um, so there's a lot of plans here, and I think they're pretty cool. I mean, we're moving away from XJS, where and, yeah, which is really great for most of us. Uh, we uh, made plans for modx.org. We uh, were going to redo the manager user experience. Uh, there's going to be modx with Slim around it. It's really cool. So awesome plans, and uh, those also resulted in working groups, and those working groups, they were uh, created to write the actual code. So. Um, a lot of stuff happened there. There's actually been a lot of work on the UX, also during those hackathons. There's been work on ModX with Slim on it. Uh, we're working on a user experience. But yeah, that resulted in this. So these are the results, and this is not a bad slide. So for a lot of people, the results of the ModX advisory board are like this. They haven't seen anything. And the reason of that is communication. So uh, while we're all trying our best to do all the best for ModX in the ModX advisory board, we're kind of having issues of reaching the community. So I would also like to use this Mod Expo to find out how you people would like to be communicated to. So what channels should we use to uh, reach you and inform you about what we're doing in the ModX advisory board? Um, I mean, we're sharing notes, we're putting them up on Twitter, on Slack, and um, so a newsletter every now and then. But um, still, we're not reaching everybody, and that's a problem. So I want to fix that. Um, so during this event, I will just talk to all of you, probably, and I really would like your in input on that. 
So the first term has ended, uh, which means that we need a new Modex advisory board. Uh, the first term actually ended before the summer. So, and during the summer it was all quiet and well, yeah, we just went to warm places, it was kind of cool. But there are elections happening right now for the Modex advisory board. And um, so there are some people leaving the Modex advisory board because they have, uh, uh, they're focused on other things. Uh, particularly their Modex agencies, usually. Uh, and the Modex advisory board actually requires a lot of time. So um, if you have Modex in your heart and you want to help Modex, uh, and you could spend at least 10 hours a month on Modex, then please participate in the elections. Everybody's welcome. And, uh, and, and we, we really learned a lot during the first term of the Modex, uh, of the Modex advisory board. And I think the second term will be way easier <laughs> because we don't have to do all the paperwork so we can actually talk about uh, ModX and make better plans and uh, share that in a better way with the community. Back to ModX. So what happened in 2017? So when I looked this up, I was really surprised by the amount of releases we did this year. Um, I, in, my, in my mind, it was like four releases or something. But So we had a lot of uh, minor releases, uh, and um, we had, of course, 2.6.0 just two weeks ago, I guess. Um, so in, this, um, in these releases, we have over 200, 200 fixes and improvements. And um, if you listened closely to me, uh, if, if you listen to me just now, I said that we fixed over 500 bugs in the Modex backends, but there's only 200 fixes in these Modex releases. So the difference is in that a lot of pull requests have been made to Modex, but they haven't all been merged into Modex. So, um, so we're all really anticipating on Modex tree, and, uh, and, and we all want that to happen, but still a lot of maintenance is going on on the current Modex branch. So Modex revolution, is still being worked on. And those 500 fixes, there are still 300 fixes left, which are not into ModX, but they are still being waited on to be merged into ModX. So those are not only fixes, but there's also a lot of cool features still on the horizon, which are already programmed, which are totally f uh, finished. We just need to merge them into ModX. And um, making a ModX release is not just pushing one button and you have a ModX release. No, it's actually a lot of work. A lot of testing is involved. and uh, well, uh, and, and the actual merging work is a lot of, a lot of work. So um, Jason Coward, our uh, chief architect of ModX, uh, he does most of the merging and he does the releases. And I'm kind of trying to move Jason away from that so he can actually start working on new stuff. So I'm trying to get people involved in fixing, mo in fixing ModX bugs or merging it all and testing it all so Jason can focus on the ModX3 stuff. So. Um, that's kind of working because Jason is currently working on ModX3. Um, while we are trying to test, as a community, test new features for ModX Revolution in the version 2 branch. So I really think that 2.7 won't take very long and 2.8 won't uh, take long as well. So, um, for example, a feature which has been de developed uh, is uh, automatic static, uh, static element saving. So. A lot of, um, uh, of us are saving uh, elements uh, as files, and we do that manually, and it's really annoying and costs a lot of time. So uh, I know that the feature of automatic saving of static elements is already finished. So especially for site builders, that's a really cool improvement, and it will probably mean 2.7. So I'm not saying that we'll, we'll continue in, in, a, in a revolution branch for years to, to, to come, but there's still a lot of stuff which we need to release on, on revolution, and it would be a shame if we just drop all those features and, 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 and say, hey, screw GitHub and just start a new project. No, we need to continue working on Monarch Revolution. Um, and I'm not saying that that will stop us from working on the next Monarch, but uh, I think it can work in parallel. So let's just continue working on, on Monarch Revolution and work on Monarch 3. So Roadmap was the sole reason the MAB was um, introduced, and we don't have a roadmap. So uh, it <laughs> took us over a year uh, to get, uh, well, a year and a half, really. Um, 
we did a lot of stuff and we made up a lot of things and, and a lot of stuff was written down, but we don't have an actual roadmap. And that's kind of hard for, um, for people in the community to understand that, hey, you have the Modics Advisory Board, but you don't have a roadmap. How did that happen? Um, well, if you are kind of active in Slack and you've, uh, uh, you noticed some uh, of our channels, like the Modex minus Slim, and it's called Modex minus Future right now, there's been some talks about uh, what the roadmap should look like. And um, we tried to create a roadmap uh, in the past, and we kind of tried to make a huge roadmap for like 2017, 2018, and 2019. Well, that doesn't work. We can't make roadmaps for the next couple of years. That just won't work. We, we, will, we will, I mean, when you're driving somewhere, you can get tr uh, st uh, stuck in traffic. Well, the same thing happens when you're developing a CMS system. So stuff can happen along the way. So that's why we said, don't, don't, don't make a roadmap for a couple of years. Just make a roadmap for like six months and then see what we can do. So current roadmap is Modix 3, which should be released uh, somewhere in 2018. And this says Q1. I think we should make it Q1 or Q2. <laughs> so that I think that the second quarter would be a realistic uh, uh, way to release ModX3. And for your info, ModX3 will not be a complete rewrite of ModX. It will actually um, be like an in-between version. So ModX3 will uh, contain the following uh, things. So uh, currently, we have a lot of um, third-party components in ModX, like uh, AWS, uh, PHP Thumb, Smarty, um, and of course, XPDO, which is currently in version two. Um, if we look at the future of ModX, we want to have mod, we want to uh, ModX to become more modular. So, um, um, and I think that's really good news for all developers over here, um, because if you just can leave out stuff which you don't need, that makes your installation lighter. So. Uh, one of the first things we should do, and which is currently being worked on, is uh, uh, getting all those dependencies, all those third-party dependencies from ModX and just put them somewhere uh, uh, so it doesn't collide with the core of ModX. Um, some of these have been uh, uh, separated already, uh, but there's also some stuff which still needs to be done. For example, the AWS uh, uh, third-party component it's in ModX right now, but I'm pretty sure that, that, that 90, maybe even more percent of the people don't even use that third-party components. So that's one of the reasons why we just say, hey, eight, uh, uh, Amazon Web Services is really cool, but we need to have it out of ModX into a third-party component. Um, so, uh, and, and one plus of this is that all these third-party components, they are currently on a version which is a couple of years old. And, um, that's really bad. I mean, it's still secure, and if something needs to be patched, we patch, we patch it. But um, if we extract these dependencies, we can update them, keep them up to date, and ModX will become faster, more secure, and uh, people can use the latest um, features. Um, another thing we're uh, trying to do is um, change the way XPDO works. So XPDO is the database of protection layer in ModX. So no, whenever we talk to the database, it's done through XPDO. So Jason Coward, he made a new version of XPDO. It's finished. Um, and it's XPDO3. It's faster. It's easier to use. Um, but it's also going to be a third party of a, or an extracted dependency. But um, in the current ModX core, and also the ModX core of version 3, which is in development, um, that uh, uh, that's all written in XPDO2. And XPDO3 uh, will be in ModX3, so we also need the models, the database models, we also need those to be changed to XPDO3. Composer installable is a feature. There was some discussion on, uh, on the GitHub and on Slack about uh, some, uh, there was some implementation of Composer we did for agencies, uh, but we're going to expand that. So uh, in ModX3, you can just uh, hit Composer install and it will install ModX from the command line, and you can install third-party dependencies uh, just with Composer. Uh, there will also be some visual improvements. That's something which were invented during the hackathons uh, in Malta and uh, in, an, uh, in the headquarters of uh, Sterk. Um, so we'll, we'll redo the login screen just because it 
we can really. I, I, just, I just think we should have a new login screen, make it cool or make it nice. We also are going to improve the dashboard um, because whenever a client log in, logs in right now, they will just see the dashboard, see the latest hacks of ModX and, uh, and stuff like that. That's not really a fancy dashboard. So when our clients log into ModX, we want them to think, wow, that's really neat. That's a cool dashboard. So um, that's the, the start of their experience with ModX is the current dashboard. And so that's why I think we need a new dashboard. We made some mockups of that. If you want to see those mockups, you can ask me and I will show you around. Uh, and last but not least, uh, resource UX improvements. Um, that's what we do in ModX. We're editing resources. And we think that that experience could be better. Yeah. Um, so um, also happened on a, a hackathon. So. Currently, when you're editing resources in ModX, it's, uh, it's sometimes it's a hell of a job. There's a lot of buttons over there which you don't use, and uh, it's not very logical where everything is. Um, we, of course, have manager customization where we can remove things from the UX, uh, from the UI, but uh, still we think there are some improvements. We also made a lot of mockups mock -ups from that, and we did a lot of testing on that. So also, if you want to see those, uh, you can ask me and I will show you. So that's the plans for ModX 3. So uh, in the next six months, I guess we'll see ModX 2.7 and 2.8, but there will also be ModX 3, and we need a lot of help over there. And if you want to contribute, and I guess you're all ModX people, and you all want to contribute, but if you don't know how to, well, somebody's telling, uh, no, we're not. Yes? Yeah, in your presentation, right? Yeah. So Yvonne will explain how you can help. And if you still don't, aren't sure about how to help, just ask us. We're all people and, and, and we have fun together and we can talk to each other. Uh, so if you have any questions regarding ModX or con contributing, just ask and we'll help you help us. So you can also find a lot of the people sitting here on Slack. So if you go to modx.org, you can sign up for Slack. It's free. It's a, a chat application. And you can also see a lot of stuff happening on version 3 on GitHub. Um, so uh, I hope to see you there. Thanks. <laughs>